The following episode depicts acts of violence and murder. Listener discretion is advised. It's early Thursday morning, December 28th, 1995. Even after a late night playing darts at a local bar, cab driver Vincent Martin has started his morning routine. He's already stopped at the nearby Dunkin' Donuts for two large coffees and a bagel. Shortly before 6 a.m., Vincent is leaving his Milbury Street apartment to get to work at Red Cab Company when he's attacked from behind. He's thrown to the ground and kicked several times while he's down. The assailants removed the cowboy boot on Vincent's right foot and struck Vincent in the head repeatedly. A few hours later, just before 8.30 a.m., another tenant discovers Vincent's body face up in the snow after following a trail of blood from the Millbury Street sidewalk between two three-decker apartment buildings. Unsolved Worcester is brought to you by the following sponsors. Follow the crowd through the doors of Donut Homies and say hi to Haley Noel, the donut queen of Worcester's Canal District. This month, the Specialty Donut Shop features special flavors like strawberry shortcake and champagne glaze. Donut Homies is open inside the Worcester Public Market at 160 Green Street every Wednesday through Sunday at 11 a.m. Online ordering with delivery and pickup options is available at DonutHomies.com. Follow Donut Homies on Facebook and Instagram for monthly menu drops, specials, and more. Donut Homies, everything sweeter with the homies. Welcome to Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. In today's episode, we explore the unsolved murder of 44-year-old Vincent Martin on December 28, 1995. Vincent was a cab driver, last seen winning at darts the night before at Madigan's Again, a Milbury Street bar. Unsolved Worcester will take a deep dive every Tuesday and Thursday into the unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's Detective Unit. We will be looking to the past to unsolved murders as far back as the early 1950s and 60s. The approach to unsolved Worcester is this. Shine a light on each of these cases. Put a life behind each victim's name. Provide a timeline of events and important details and ask the questions that still need to be answered. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, that there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases that need resolution. We hope we can be the spark needed to solve a case. A week after his murder on January 4th, 1996, Vincent Martin was buried in Worcester County Memorial Park in Paxton. His funeral was held at St. Stephen's Church on Worcester's Grafton Hill in front of a few dozen mourners. Reverend William Sanders told those in attendance at William's funeral not to remember Vincent as just a cab driver or a darts player as a child of God. And Father Sanders was right. Vincent was more than just a cabbie or a dart player. He was also the father of two children, Luke and Jennifer. A son, a brother, and an uncle. Vincent's friends described him as a good guy and likable. A clerk at Dunkin' Donuts told the Telegram and Gazette that Vincent was thoughtful and polite. 
The landlord of the three-decker apartment where Vincent lived described him as an excellent tenant and someone who always paid his rent on time. Vincent only worked as a cab driver for a few years, splitting that time between Worcester Yellow Cab and the Red Cab Company. For 18 years before he got behind the wheel of a cab, Vincent worked in the wire and cable department at the former Phalo Plastics Company in Shrewsbury. Phalo Plastics was located on the land of what is now home to the Home Depot on Route 9. Phalo Plastics Factory Building was sold and closed in 1991. The factory building would be demolished shortly after, making way for the construction of the Home Depot Home Improvement Store, which opened in late 1993. Speaking of demolition, both the building where Vincent was last seen and the building he was killed outside of would also be demolished in the late 1990s following a land seizure on Millbury Street to relocate Route 146. The land seizure also included the removal of the Irish Club and the Ivy Cafe and the dugout. This is the second time this season we've mentioned a crime scene on Millbury Street that has been wiped off the map in Worcester due to the Millbury Street reconstruction and the new 146 connector. Episode 3 of Season 2, the former home of Jack and Felicia's Cafe at 731 Millbury Street, where bar owner John Zoromsky was killed in 1967, it was also torn down and made way for a ramp leading to a pedestrian bridge connecting Millbury Street and Quinsigamond Avenue. Vincent was last seen playing darts at Madigan's Again a Bar at 646 Millbury Street was found dead outside of the three-decker he lived at, 578 Millbury Street, about a two-minute walk from the barroom. Coming up, we will tell you just how good a dark player Vincent Martin was and why it may have got him killed. Vincent Martin was a regular at Madigan's again on Millbury Street. You can time your watch for Vincent to show up for a few beers at the local bar by 4 p.m. each day. He was best known at Madigan's for his four bull out, four bullseyes in one game, something he'd achieved that fall while playing darts in the bar. Dirt players at Madigan's would tell the Telegram and Gazette that Vincent would have been honored in June 1996 during the Worcester Dart League's annual banquet. The night before, Vincent was bludgeoned to death with his own cowboy boot in front of his home on Millbury Street. He was winning at darts at Madigan's again, again. Vincent was a member of Madigan's traveling dart team in the Worcester Darts League, and he and his partner Jesse Baptista won on Wednesday night, December 27th, 1995, in a match against the dart team from the former Joe D's Sports Bar on Cambridge Street. Baptista told the telegram that Vincent went home around 10.30 p.m., In 2014, Vincent's sister, Eileen Kaminsky, told the telegram that her brother Vincent may have kept his winnings from that night in his boot. Police believe that whoever killed Vincent likely knew him and knew where he lived, what his schedule was, how much cash he had on him from winning at Madigan's again the night before, and where he kept his money. In 2017, Worcester Police Detective William Donovan told Worcester Magazine that it took police some years to figure it out, but they're certain there were multiple assailants responsible for Vincent's murder. The autopsy concluded Vincent died from head and neck trauma. 
Police told reporters that some of the neighbors recalled hearing an argument on the morning Vincent was killed. Police would later describe the scene as a robbery turned murder. When his body was discovered, Vincent's wallet was several feet away from him. There was no cash in it. The cowboy boot that was used to kill him was also empty and a few feet away from Vincent. There were no other weapons at the scene and no wounds on Vincent's body that would suggest other weapons were used. On the night of Vincent Martin's death, hours after his body was found, his dark teammates and friends at Madigan's again raised a drink in his honor. Thank you for listening. I'm Dan Yeager. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider clicking the like button for us. And if you subscribe, the next episodes will show up in your feed. Click the bell on the right and you'll get a notification when the next episode is ready. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. We do read them all and respond to as many as we can. Anyone with information about the murder of Vincent Martin is asked to contact the Worcester Police Detective Bureau at 508-799-8651 or send an anonymous text to 274-637. Write TIPWPD plus your message or send an anonymous web-based message at worcestermagovernor forward slash police. Come back on Tuesday as Season 2 of Unsolved Worcester continues with the unsolved murder of 27-year-old Helen Chevalier in March 1994. Helen's body was found behind 34 Beacon Street after snow had melted away. She was wrapped in blankets and a trash bag was over her head, sealed with electrical tape. She had been strangled to death. Be sure to visit Unsolved Worcester on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Unsolved Worcester. Listen to all episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com. Podcast streaming platforms including Spotify, iTunes, and more. Special thanks to Worcester Public Library, the Worcester Police Department, the City of Worcester, Ron Scott at New England Sky Picks, and our sponsors for making this possible. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom LaBelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode of Unsolved Worcester is written and produced by Pat Sargent. Drone footage provided by New England Sky Picks. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. Victim images are courtesy of the Worcester Police Department. Sponsorship information announcer Chandler Walsh. Be sure to check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on our Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't miss another episode. Click the notification button to get alerts when the new episodes of Unsolved Worcester drop. This program is supported in part by a grant from the Worcester Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts. Find out more about how National Endowment for the Arts grants impact individuals and communities. Visit www.arts.gov.